this sketchbook is boring. Functional, but boring. Someone in my position may ask, how do you go about solving this problem? You put stickers on the cover. Do you paint it? Do you just abuse the cover of that sketchbook until it's practically falling apart, complete with water stains? Certainly, that'll give it an aged look. No, my friends. The answer is to make a completely new sketchbook, even though you haven't finished your old ones. Except it's not just a sketchbook, it's a spell book, and it glows. What's up lads? My name is Kira and as I mentioned at the top of the video today we are doing something just a little bit different. I made this small simple sketchbook over the summer and I had a lot of fun filling it and it is very functional but it is not made with what I would call technique. Today I am going to try to make an actual full-size sketchbook using good bookbinding techniques with some fun fantasy twists. And the spellbook is a smaller part of a bigger costuming project that I should have a video out for in a couple of weeks. So if you want to catch that when it comes out then you should subscribe because I am very excited to show it to you guys. I've spent so much time on this project. I'm kind of ready to be done with it. And you may notice that my workspace is a little bit different from usual. That's because this video is sponsored by FlexiSpot and they sent me a desk, but we'll hear more about this desk a little bit later. So since I've never done this before, a bit of research is in order. So over the last week, I've been binge watching Nerdforge's bookbinding videos and I have to say, I am thoroughly confused but I think I have found my technique. Most of the techniques for this video were taken directly from Nerdforge's Grimoire Book of Shadows video, so definitely give it a watch after you watch this video. But of course, I don't have the same materials Martina has, and I wanted to do this for pretty cheap, so I opted for a few somewhat unconventional materials, like substituting EVA foam for vegetable tanned leather. I started with this little design breakdown to figure out what kind of look I wanted to give this book. Since it's related to another project that I don't want to give away too much about, out, let's just say the main themes I wanted to go for here were fall and the Libra Zodiac. Also, because I'm extra and I've been adding LEDs to all of my building projects lately, I'm also going to add some to this spellbook. So another important step of designing the spellbook was to figure out a mini schematic for hiding my LEDs. Even though I have a schematic, I'm still a little nervous about hiding them successfully, but we'll figure it out. After I made my little rough design, I figured I had most of my materials on hand, so after picking up some multimedia paper from the Hobby lobby, I was ready to get started. I began by wiring the LEDs for the cover since it's a pretty quick process. So I folded one of the sheets of paper I was using in half and estimated how much foam I would need for the cover. And from there, estimated how much wire I would need based on how it sits. It's definitely not the most precise thing. For something like this, the wiring process itself is pretty simple. First, I wired my three LEDs directly together in parallel since they needed to be close together in my cover anyways. Also, okay, is it just me or is wire stripping and wire cutting the most satisfying thing ever. I mean, just look at this. Wow. Then I simply attached my positive wire to the longer leg of the LEDs and my neutral wire to the short leg. Also, please excuse my horrific soldering. I know it's offensive. D it's fine. D don't judge. It. Once that connection was secure, I added some heat shrink tubing to my wires and tested it on the battery to make sure I did it right. I did. Yay. Then I soldered the wires to the battery holder and added some heat shrink tubing over that as well. After checking that to make sure that I did it right, I cut a section on the positive wire so that I could add in a switch. Wire switch is so cute. He's so little. The switch is by far the most tedious thing to solder, but after that my little LED circuit was complete and I brought it to the producer to get her endorsement. Sam, can I get your thoughts and opinions? You think, what do you think? Is it nice? Would you like to take a snap? Did I mention that wiring LEDs into literally everything you own is just about the coolest thing in the world? Because it is, it's the coolest thing ever. I have a problem. Step one of actually making this thing is basically to fold like 60 pages in half and it's the most tedious part, so Let's fold a bunch of pages in half, I guess. I used all 60 pages of my multimedia ream and separated them into signatures. Signatures are little groupings of pages that get sewn together. My pages got divided into 15 signatures with four pages each. This made for a nice thick looking book. She was adequately hefty and when you slap it down on the table, it makes that satisfying sound. And after all the folding and separating was done, I put the pages into this makeshift book binding press, which is literally just some old pieces of wood and some clamps to get all the folds nice and flat overnight. After that was done, all the pages needed holes, which I tried to do with this hacksaw since I don't have a coping saw. I have no idea if this is going to work properly. 
on, but it kind of only partially worked. I've opted for violence. So instead, I punched the holes for all 15 signatures by hand with a hammer and nail, and this worked a lot better. And I've got to say, I might have to report the executive producer to OSHA because she was really not following safety protocols here. Disgraceful. In an act of unhinged ingenuity, I've purchased a VHS rack because the entire process of this bookbinding video is just basically copying a video that Nerdforge already made and they use this bookbinding jig thing. It's just a chair. So I was like, I can probably find a chair at a thrift store. Well, I didn't find a chair, but I did find this. And it's got these equally spaced bars that I think I can tie the cord onto and bind my book this way. The method for binding the pages is to take jute cord and a thicker thread. Are you done? I need that. And twist four lines of jute cord around the parallel bars, and then sew the thread onto the cord using the holes I made in the signatures. My sewing method is pretty wonky because I didn't make my holes right, but whenever I was done sewing, I actually managed to make something somewhat functional. Wow. For the headband things that go on the top of the pages, I just sewed some spare foam onto the top, I probably should have used actual leather to give it more structure because I do have some lying around, but it worked well enough. Especially after the next step, which is to slather the entire ridge in Elmer's glue to make the spine more rigid. And this step was really fun. There's just something that feels so fifth grader about getting to slather something in Elmer's glue. Especially if that thing is your tongue because you're eating the glue. I applied two coats of glue and stuck it in my clamp jig overnight to dry. And the next morning, it was time to add the cover boards. For the cover boards, I just used the back of some old sketchbooks. Rest in peace, old sketchbooks. I traced the shape of my folded paper onto the cardboard and cut them out, and then marked where I wanted the jute cord to attach to them. And it was at this point that I used punching the holes as an excuse to use power tools on this project. <laughs> So I drilled the holes in the cover boards. Do you ever use a power tool and then you can just feel yourself turning into Al from Home Improvement? It's like you pick up a power tool and bam, you're wearing flannel. To attach the cover boards, I simply threaded the four cords through each hole, frayed the ends of the cords so that they would lay flat, and then once again slathered it in Elmer's glue, another step that is entirely too satisfying. While the jute cord was drying, I placed some parchment paper on the inside cover so that the glue wouldn't stick to my pages and placed it back in my clamp jig to dry. Even though this is a sketchbook and there isn't really much need for one, I also added a ribbon page marker for the aesthetic. Okay, now that the physical book part of the book is done, we're ready to go in and begin working on the decorative parts of the cover, which I have to say is the most tumultuous part of this process because I don't have a tutorial for this part. So we're basically just going in completely blind and gonna do some trial and error. I'm a little nervous about how I'm going to actually make the LEDs fit in the front cover of this book. I've been brainstorming a little bit and I think I've found a method that will probably hopefully work. Otherwise, there's not gonna be a video. So let's, let's try. So I began by marking and cutting out the foam that my cover design would go on, which you can see in this awful time-lapse footage. I kind of messed up my camera settings. But since I also had the added challenge of trying to hide my LEDs in the cover, I also cut out these little ridge pieces to give my LEDs a place to sit under the cover. So I glued those babies on with the tastiest of glues, which is barge cement, which is the contact cement. It's my favorite. And now I had a place to hide my LEDs in the cover. But before I could hide my LEDs, I also needed to know how big to make the hole for my gemstone and where to put it on the cover. So before I did that, I painted all of my stones. In true Nerdforge fashion, for this part, we have to steal some gravel. In addition to the main stones, I also wanted some little stones on the corner of my book. And for that, I painted some literal gravel stones with some of my special effects paint. I did a few layers of pearlescent paint mixed with this blue and added some of my glitter special effects paint on top. And for how cheap this method is, it actually looks a decent amount like an opal. And for my main stone, I applied a thick layer of glitter paint to the underside along with my dragonfly paint with a tiny bit of the glitter paint on top just to give it some like dimension and depth. And this really makes Made it look like an actual gemstone, especially with the light shining through it. I was like kind of impressed that this actually worked. To figure out where I wanted to place my main gem on the front, I just kind of eyeballed it and I cut out a piece of this mermaid fabric to go underneath just to make things a little bit more glowy and reflective. And then I began gluing my LEDs in place. 
To access the switch, I just cut out a slit in the side of the ridge and placed it where I could flip it on and off easily. And at this point, I also decided I wanted a cover board for the spine so I could add my battery pack to it. So I cut one and attached it to the other boards using some of this leather cord. I also glued my battery pack onto a piece of foam and glued that onto the spine board. From there, I just glued my wires down, even though I ended up ripping them up and changing it later. And then after that, I cut out the raised sort of embossed pieces that are gonna go on the cover. And now it was time for more of the fun bits. I wanted the cover to have this autumn tree on it, so I copied the autumn tree down from my digital design onto the cover, but with a bit more detail. And for the back cover, I also wanted something cool, so I just freehanded some marigolds and some fall leaves, which I loved, but I'm not as big of a fan of the Libra symbol, but what are you gonna do? Regardless, it was time for more power tools, yeah! I admit, this is where the crafting method for this video gets a bit less accessible. It's time to Dremel some stuff. My Dremel skills are still a little bit rough, and also my Dremels are pretty high RPM, but to help, I clamped my pieces onto the table and just Dremeled away. <sighs> I cannot emphasize how loud this is. <laughs> This part is very tedious and I messed up a lot, but once I was finished, I cleaned up my rough edges with my box cutters so they actually looked pretty good. In addition to my bevels, I also added some indents for the stones that are gonna go on the cover. I also totally forgot to film cutting these, but I also made little raised pieces for my cover that will attach to the buckle, and I added some detail to those with my Dremel as well. To get some deeper indents, I also used my foam designated soldering iron. Disclaimer, burning foam is super toxic. <laughs> and you don't wanna be breathing it in. So you've gotta wear a respirator and have good ventilation. If you do something like this, please don't breathe in foam. I used the same technique to burn in the details on the covers. This really added a nice touch. But since I didn't want all the lines to be that thick, I also cut some of them in with my box cutter. To make these cuts look like soldering iron lines, all you gotta do is run a heat gun over your foam because it burns the edges and it opens it up and it looks like magic. I just repeated these same steps on the back cover, and now it's time to watch the executive producer be adorable. Oh my gosh, look at those toe beans. Okay, back to work. Before gluing all of my pieces together, I punched some holes through my buckle pieces and then attached them to the actual buckle and secured it with some rivets. And now it is tasty barge cement time. I'm just kidding, this glue smells like death. I glued down my cover pieces. glued in my gem, glued on the raised edges, and then cleaned up the edges with my Dremel, and oh my god, it was late at night and it was so loud! And after finally gluing on our buckle pieces, we were basically done for the night. Okay. I'm a mess, and so is my workstation, but I've been working for a little bit now, and I've been doing a lot off camera just because it's getting late and I really need to get stuff done. So I'm just gonna go over what I have done off camera so you guys can see. It is pretty much like a whole solid book. It just needs to be painted now. So we have of course done the sort of like spine of it, and all I did was take some foam and kind of layer it up, and I have like one piece of foam here, And then I added these like end caps just to add a little bit more detail and make it a little bit more interesting to look at. And this one is glued on, but then this one down at the bottom is where the battery holder is. So this one is actually Velcroed on so that I still have access to my battery holder and it just comes right off whenever I need to actually change the battery. I added some details with my knife and opened those up with the heat gun. And on the inside, this is maybe a little bit weird, but in lieu of cover pages, I actually just covered all of this mess up with some fabric because it's the one thing that I have in abundance. And this is just hot glued on. I think I might try to reinforce it with some other type of glue or fastener just to see if I can get to be a little bit more secure. But for now, it, it works and I can still get to all of my pages here. Here's the other side, a little messy, but I think it was a decent solution since I didn't have any cover pages. It's weird that I don't have cardstock lying around, but 
unfortunately I don't. I also have these buckles that I drilled holes for. They're supposed to go here and loop around so that string them through a belt and this can hang off my waist. But my rivets are not long enough. They're these little dinky ones. So I need to go to the store and get rivets, but the store is closed tomorrow. So we'll figure out something, but these are also part of the mix. It looks like a real hefty book and oh my gosh, it's heavy. Like it's actually heavy. If you threw this at my face and it hit me, I might get a concussion. I don't know. And that's what I like to see in a spell book. So I would say that we are on the right track with this thing. I am going to go clean myself and eat food. Whenever I get back from that, I need to prime the entire thing so that it can be ready for painting. And I don't even know what I'm going to use to prime it. I'm going to at least do a base coat with something and then try to do some of the painting tonight. I'm tired, but even so, let's press on. Why, hello there. What's up? It is Sponsorship Kira here to tell you a little bit about this video's sponsor, which is FlexiSpot. FlexiSpot is a company that offers standing desks and other active furniture so you can feel better about doing nothing but watching YouTube videos all day. Hello, internet. Welcome to Film Theory. The model FlexiSpot sent me is the FlexiSpot EWA electric standing desk and I have been using it for about a month now and I absolutely love it. Standing desks can be a great way to make your workflow a little healthier if you have a sedentary lifestyle. As a creator, I sit all day. Scripting, editing, drawing, it's all done at a desk on a computer and sitting all day is terrible for you. A standing desk is great for working from home, for illustration, for digital art, for PC gaming, but I've also been using mine as a work service for my crafting projects like sewing, foam smithing, and costuming, which is great because it adds so much mobility to my crafting process. I mean, I can go from sitting down Standing, all with the simple push of a button. But let me tell you a bit about the features of this desk. This desk is really sturdy with very little wobble at any height. The frame of this desk is industrial steel and can support up to 110 pounds, and mine has a beautiful sleek glass top. But the size of the frame and top are also fully customizable, so you can choose a style that fits your space. The height adjustment pad includes up and down buttons with a height adjustment range of 28.3 to 47.6 inches, so it works even for tall folks, and it also includes a lock button so you can safely set the height you want, as well as four preset buttons so you can save various heights. It also comes with two USB ports and a USB-C port so you can charge phones and other devices, which is great because my phone actually doesn't work anymore unless it's plugged in. And one of my favorite features is actually this drawer. It's just a drawer, but I really like it. <laughs> Assembly is quick and easy. I did it myself in about half an hour and everything you need is included in the package. But from there, you literally just plug in a few cords and it's ready to use. If you're interested in upgrading to a standing desk, FlexiSpot has some Black Friday offers that they want you guys to know about. Right now, you can get up to 30% off a purchase from FlexiSpot on their Amazon. You can shop around their Amazon using the link in my description. Maybe get yourself a standing desk or something else. So thank you to anyone who checks them out. It helps me out and I really appreciate it. Thank you so much to FlexiSpot for sponsoring this video. Now let's get back to the crafting process. All right, so the painting process didn't exactly go smoothly. Even though I made myself a colored reference for how I wanted the cover to look, achieving that same look in real life was super difficult, especially when it came to mixing colors and getting the right amount of saturation without getting a muddy result. To begin the painting, I started out with this simple base coat of acrylic satin black paint. I tried to make sure I got the base coat in every crevice to make sure the foam was as sealed as possible. And from there, I did a base coat of cyan on the surface of the front and back covers like it shows in my reference. And then I began painting the design onto the cover. The front cover was by far the hardest part because it's basically just a mini illustration, but if it was a fully detailed painting, it would look super weird. So I had to simplify the elements in a way that looked good on a book cover, but like it was still mimicking leather. And since it's also supposed to match a project that I've already completed, another huge challenge was color matching the paint job to the overall costume and incorporating some of the secondary colors as well. The costume this matches has reds, oranges, blues, greens, and purples. It incorporates so many different colors across the whole costume. So I could simplify this a lot and pick a basic color scheme, or I could do what I do best and choose the maximalist approach and attempt to balance all these colors. So that's what I did. Since I had to do a lot of paint mixing, I had a hard time 
trying to keep my paints from getting muddy, so I had to do a lot of layers. Uh, in the past, I've also mixed heavily pigmented ink with acrylics on cosplay projects to get more vibrant color results, but I didn't have any, so I was forced to work with what I had. And since I didn't use a proper primer like Plasti Dip on the foam, the surface had a rough fuzzy texture that comes from using the Dremel, so unfortunately, when I used metallic paints in those areas, they appeared a lot less reflective and kind of dull. I stuck pretty closely to my original design for the front cover, but I did make the raised bits more of a bright auburn color and decided to add a purple border in addition to the gold border. I kind of winged it for the few parts of the design that changed, like the spine and the piece that holds the gem, but to simplify things as much as I could, I mostly kept to rich blues, purples, and golds as accent colors with a base of brown. To give the covers some dimensionality, I used a bit of a shading trick I do with digital painting and added a lot of saturated colors inside of existing color blocks or shadows. This also helps to make things look more vibrant. Even though the front cover was a huge pain, the back cover went much smoother. I think it really benefited from having a much simpler design, so I'll remember that for next time. I also think the knife method worked a lot better than using the soldering iron because burning foam leaves a lot of rough edges, so the back design looked a lot more crisp. Since the flowers are supposed to be marigolds, I basically stuck with that color scheme and painted them with a mix of reds, oranges, and yellows, and painted the leaves with greens and warm yellows as well. A trick that helped the color scheme come together was adding some of the cyan into the leaves. This is an example of the trick I mentioned earlier. Since there were so many different colors in the paint job, incorporating some core undertones helped them to look a lot more unified. I also tried to incorporate the purple from the back cover on the front cover wherever I could, again, just to make sure that the color scheme was looking unified. There's a lot of purple in the core design of the costume itself, so I tried to lean pretty heavily on that purple-orange-blue color scheme since those colors look nice together for the most part. Once I had all of the colors generally roughed in and everything kind of finished, I also got some feedback from my family members and spent a lot more time trying to tweak the colors and make them look a little bit nicer. In the end, I used used my effects paints more so for highlights on top of normal paints, and I also did a lot of dry brushing with some of the metallic paints as well. I wanted to do a lot more aging and weathering on this project than I ended up doing, but I was kind of afraid of muddying up the colors even more, so I decided to focus mainly on doing a wash of darker color inside all of the recessed areas on the designs and around any deep gaps where surfaces met. This always gives a paint job a lot more dimension, but I do wish I had done just a little bit more because I'm extra and I can't help myself when it comes to weathering. Since I don't have an airbrush, a trick that I do occasionally to add some gradients and stuff like that is to mask off an area and use some spray paint instead. So that's what I did for this bit on the cover. I just wanted to add a little bit more purple to the cover to balance out the design. And I think it looked pretty cool. At this point, we're mostly getting to finishing touches, so to get a better idea of my color scheme, I glued my stones onto the front cover and painted my straps that I'll attach to the cover so that they can attach to a belt. I managed to steal some rivets off an old prop, so now my straps work just fine. I also added a border to some of the edges of the designs with a micron pen to clean it up, and after a while, I had tweaked as much as I could, so I masked off the pages and added a few coats of glossy acrylic clear. But once she was dry, I added the finishing touches and fancy bits that were in the rest reference, and it is finally time for the reveal. Despite the chaotic paint job, I actually really love it. I'm pleased with how it came out for my first try. It still screams, I am a cosplay prop, because what mass of EVA foam and barge cement doesn't? But for the limitations I had, I'm actually super proud of it. If you like how it came out and you want to see more projects like this from me, leave some suggestions in the comments because I love to make stuff and I would love to hear more ideas for crafting projects. And that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed watching me make something a little bit different this week. I absolutely love I love crafting and costuming and sewing, and I definitely plan on making more content like this in the future. So if you want to see more content like this, be sure to like, comment, subscribe, turn on notifications so that this video will do a little bit better because 
right now me and the algorithm aren't exactly on speaking terms. Thank you to everyone who watches to the end of the video because I really appreciate it. Seriously helps out a lot. Remember to watch Nerdforge's bookbinding video that I referenced to make this book because I absolutely love their channel. They are like one of my favorite channels on YouTube right now and I wouldn't have been able to do this without them putting out a video on how to do it so go show them some love because it's just amazing content in general. But yeah I hope those of you who celebrate it had a wonderful Thanksgiving and I will see you guys next time. Now it is time for me to sit on my butt and watch the White Queen and do absolutely nothing. I'm so excited. Bye.